G'day, g'day, and welcome to Tartarian Truthers with your hosts, Casey and Jojo. Now, before we start, we'd like to take a minute to thank everyone for your support last week. We did our first Tartaria Australia chat with Campbell and Kelly, which was amazing. Oh, it was, Jojo. Can I just say, though, I was so starstruck during that interview. <laughs> I've been watching autodidactic channels since I learned about Tartaria. So I was totally fangirling. It was such a spin out to be talking to Campbell in person after watching him for so many years. I know. Look, I couldn't believe it myself because you actually introduced me to um, Campbell and autodidactic and the autodidactic channel um, when we first met. And I, I think I watched all his episodes within like one <laughs> week. So I, I hear you. So Kelly was lovely too, wasn't she? She made us feel so comfortable and I'm, I'm so grateful really that they was. had us on the show. Yeah, they were absolute two legends. And then just a day or so later, we did our very first podcast interview with your beautiful friend, Conrad, which also had a great response. Yes, especially since it was his first video podcast, but um, actually his 112th podcast all up. So in case you miss them, guys, we'll pop the links in the description below. So Casey, I watched your Instagram stories on your visit to Ballarat and was blown away by the amazing architecture and hospitality of the kind souls that showed you around. How was your visit? Oh, my goodness, Jojo. Wow. There is seriously so much to unpack when it comes to Ballarat and its wild and wacky history that we could probably do 10 episodes on it. I'm not even joking. I bet. <laughs> so for the sake of sanity and time, um, I'm only going to focus on the parts of Ballarat that I was actually able to experience for myself, thanks to some of the very kind locals. Okay, Casey, I'm excited. Let's dig in. Alrighty. Now, to be honest, Jojo, the first day I arrived in Ballarat, I was awestruck. And if you saw my Insta stories from that first day, you would have been able to hear it in my voice. I could not believe what I was seeing. The amount of old world buildings that are absolutely everywhere is insane. I felt like I'd gone back in time. So, on that very first day, Steve, my husband, and I walked around for literally hours and took in all the amazing architecture. And I was so excited, Jojo, that I forgot that it was summer in Australia. And well, as you can see, this was me the next day. Oh, lesson learned, huh? Oh my goodness, Casey, you need to wear a hat. <laughs> I know, I know. You know what? I had a cat, I had a hat in the car, but I was just, I don't know. I didn't even know you what else. Just I was jumped thinking. out and just like, oh my goodness, I need to see I everything, did. right? <laughs> yeah, it was insane. But anyway, the next day I met up with Zach. So more on this incredible human being later. And this is also a picture of him, of him here with his lovely mate Greg. And they took Steve and I on a little adventure under Ballarat under Ballarat what I know they <laughs> took us to the Yarrawee River and the Nar Creek drainage systems where we walked for literally what felt like hours right underneath the main city center of Ballarat now that was such a wild experience Jojo because those tunnel systems are extensive hmm interesting yeah, very interesting. So we estimate that the Yarrawee River Channel is about three kilometres long and about eight to nine metres wide and two metres deep. And then the Nar Creek Tunnel, which we followed and eventually popped back up outside on the other side of Ballarat. So that we estimate to be about 950 metres long by three metres tall and one and a half metres wide. Wow, that is a fair size, right? Exactly. So plus there were also many other smaller tunnels coming off these main ones and some are now bricked up um, and others are still open. 
But after doing a little bit of research, what I discovered was that according to the official narrative, these were all lined with bluestone in the 1860s. And that's when the population of Ballarat was only around 13,000 people. So a pretty small population by that stage because didn't it have a much bigger population earlier on? Yeah, so around 1854 in the crux of the gold rush, they estimate that it was around 20,000 people. But most of these people didn't stick around after the initial rush and they moved on to find their riches elsewhere. But to be fair, as you can see from this old newspaper article from 1860, there were also similar sized populations in towns around the locality of Ballarat. But Jojo, we have to keep in mind that with all these outlying towns, they were also being established at the same time and all with the same massive and beautiful architecture and all using the same infrastructure and manufacturing techniques. Okay, this is insane. It beggars belief that all this was able to be excavated, the stone quarried, cut and dressed, and not to mention transported. The bricks made, the buildings built, all at the same time with such a small population. I know, right? And I, what I really want to focus on here is the bluestone, Jojo, because Ballarat is literally built on bluestone. It's everywhere. All the old gutters, the drains, the foundations of the buildings, some of the churches and also entire buildings are built out of it. Now from doing a bit of research into quarrying in the area, apparently Ballarat was actually built on basalt which made quarrying easier as it didn't have to be transported very far. They even say that the hospital was built where it was back in the day because there, were excellent, there was excellent building stone to be found right there on the spot. So there were quarries around and that's where they were getting all this stone for pretty much everything. So I'm not disputing that at all. But Jojo, I do want to know who was doing all this hard labour? I know, I want to know too. <laughs> I know because this this isn't rough cut stone Jojo. I mean check this out. These were some highly skilled tradesmen who were doing this work. You know as you can see by the intricate stone facing on these um, blue stone blocks here and then of course you've got the absolute beauty and grandeur of the architecture itself. Mm -hmm. Wow that's incredible. Look at that. Yeah so now of course all this opulence mm. is attributed to the gold rush, right? <laughs> yeah, well, that's what they say, isn't it? I mean, that's how they say Melbourne grew so fast in such a short period of time. But it seems unrealistic, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, so all these people came to Ballarat, right? They found gold and then they used it to build massive buildings. I mean, is, is that what they mean happened? <laughs> Did they use the gold they found to hire highly skilled stonemasons and other tradesmen to build marvellous mansions, huge government buildings and underground infrastructure? I don't know, Jojo. It seems like a bit of a stretch to me, especially considering that Ballarat was founded in 1838 by sheep herders, became a municipality in 1855, a borough, in 1863 and then a city in 1870. I mean that is huge growth in such a short period of time going from this to this in 32 years. Oh, oh my gosh Casey yeah that seems kind of weird especially considering people are out there to find gold right not to give mm -hmm. up their chance of striking it rich to do the hard and heavy labour of mining basalt for probably pittance a day. Mm, yeah, exactly. But you know what, Jojo? There's even more <laughs> to this fabulous <laughs> town. So you remember back in episode five when we talked about mud floods mm -hmm. and we found the article from the Courier about the underground streets of Ballarat. Yes, that was one of my favourite episodes. 
mine too <laughs> we literally say that about all of our I episodes know. don't we, <laughs> we do <laughs> anyway anyway after like so when I said that I was going to come to Ballarat I put a call out on Instagram and when I knew that I was going to be traveling through Ballarat I was contacted by the incredible Zach who hooked me up with the fabulous Christine now Christine has access to the underground shop fronts that we actually featured in that episode Jojo oh wow that is so freaking cool I know. Yes. So I was invited to Christine's bookshop in the Mechanics Institute building on Sunday night. So Christine is not only fabulous, Jojo, but she's also a huge Tartarian Truthers fan. And she's been telling everyone who comes into her shop to watch our stuff. She's awesome. Oh, that's so awesome. Hi, Christine, if you're watching. And thank you so much for taking care of my bestie. You are (laughs) awesome. (laughs) She really is. Anyway. So I had to climb down this little hole in the floor of Christine's shop and into the room below where I met more locals, including the lovely Tristan and Amber, also huge Tartarian Truther fans. And they gave me some fascinating historical goss on Ballarat that blew my mind. But we'll have to save that for another episode. But I'll give you a clue, Jojo. It involves mental asylums and orphanages. It's kind of creepy. Jeepers. Yeah. Yeah. So then I spent the next few hours in the underground shop fronts under the Mechanics Institute of Ballarat with a group of amazing people. We explored, we chatted, we drank 40-year-old port that Christine found in a skip bin. (laughs) It was was wild. And we listened to some really talented musicians. I just, I had such a fun night. Oh my gosh, that sounds like so much fun. I wish I could have been there too. Oh, I know, Jojo. I wish you were there too. You would have loved it. So anyway, here's some footage of the underground shops and the fabulous Christine giving us a bit of a tour. I mean, they even still have the remnants of posters on the walls and writing where people wrote their names and some dates on the walls. It was just all so fascinating. So what's the story behind all this, Casey? I mean, why are all those shops underground? Yeah, it's all a bit odd, really, Jojo, because apparently these aren't the only underground areas around Ballarat. Besides the drainage tunnels that I mentioned earlier, there's also an old underground bakery and a dungeon under the Ballarat SMB campus library, as well as tunnels that lead from the old jail to the courthouse. And these are only the ones that I was told about. I mean, there could possibly be more that just aren't as commonly known. But of course, we all want to know why, right? Why is all this infrastructure under the ground? Yeah, exactly. Just why? Okay. Are you ready for this cracker of a tale, Jojo? I I am. Get ready for it. So apparently Ballarat was full of hills and cliffs. Hmm. And they decided to make it flat by using the byproduct from the gold mines. But the buildings were already there, Jojo. So that's why parts of them are underground. Jeez. They were really busy back in the day, huh, Casey? I mean, not only were the 13,000 people of Ballarat building an epic city from scratch, literally, but they were also transporting thousands of tons of dirt and rubble from the gold fields into Ballarat, covering up half the city's already completed infrastructure of buildings. And I'm assuming the roads of the time too. And then compacting it all to make sure that it was hard enough to then build more buildings and roads on top of it. (laughs) Wow. I mean, these poor townsfolk must have been working around the clock to get that done by hand, mind you. I mean, we didn't even have the machinery that we we have nowadays to excavate and move soil. So it would have been an absolute mammoth task, hey? Exactly, Jojo. And don't forget that they were also mining and cutting all the bluestone to line those kilometres of underground tunnels, Mm. curbs and guttering too. Oh, my goodness. Of course. They had a bit on, hey? (laughs) They sure (laughs) did. (laughs) But then there's also this side of the story too, which I saw when I was under Christine's shop. So 
this made me laugh. The street level of Sturt has always been as it is today. A story began years ago that the windows in this area were at street level, but this is not true. Part of the 1869 additions to the building, the basements were dug out with the original intention of providing extra storage areas for fuel and for the establishment of a restaurant. The restaurant never came into being, as far as we can tell, so sections of the basements were leased to the above shops, note stairs leading nowhere, where the remainder served as a storage area for surplus books and newspapers. The windows were part of the original design for the restaurant to look out onto a garden area with overhead grills in the pavement to let in light. However, when ladies started wearing high heels, they become caught in these, so they were removed and paved over. <laughs> Those darn <laughs> heels, huh? Oh, my God, I can't even. <laughs> I know. Who would have thought that a change in women's shoe attire would cause them to rip up the only light source to the underground levels? Now, that's dedication to fashion. <laughs> but all laughs aside, though, you know, you would think that having such a long and quite publicly known history of a Ballarat underground that it would at least be heritage listed, right? Yeah. But it's not, Jojo. There's actually no published list or catalogue of below ground structures and oh. none of them are on a heritage list. They don't even advertise them or have public tours for people to go check out the Ballarat underground. I mean, it's almost like they don't really want too much attention being brought to the fact that Ballarat has this underground history. Wow, that's really interesting, isn't it? And so strange. It really makes you wonder what the real story is behind Ballarat and how old it really is. It sure appears to be a lot older than what the mainstream historical narrative tells us. Yeah, absolutely, Jojo. I mean, the size and the amount of some of the buildings alone is just astounding in itself. But what really caught my attention was the amount of churches in such a small area. There are currently 20 churches in use as churches in Ballarat. And many of them are so close to each other. In one area alone, there were four churches on the one street right next to each other. And most are very old too. But then as we drove around, I noticed a few other smaller churches that are no longer in use as churches or are now being used for other things. And actually talking to Zach, he was saying that a lot of the old buildings and churches have been or were uh, turned into nightclubs, Jojo. So, oh you know, <laughs> yeah, they had like the underground areas where they yeah. would go down into like the basements and stuff. And, you know, you'd have your different um, rooms for your different styles of music and stuff wow. so yeah it's, it's a it's a crazy it's little town so many questions on these mm. churches hey mm. like what was the what was the purpose for so many in such a small town with such a small population yeah exactly so many questions Jojo all right, so in this next part, this is pretty cool. So I was lucky enough to have a little flick through one of the old newspapers when I visited um, Christine's shop too. Um, so if you, we watch this little video, it's just a little video of me kind of getting a little bit excited about the amount of newspapers that they still have stored in this building. Oh, wow. If only you had more time to look through them, huh? I know. There were so many. But we chose the one with the oldest date on it. Uh, that was Zach there. And the oldest date that we could find was 1859. How cool is that? Um, I tell you what, Jojo, I was surprised at the size of those old papers and the amount of information that they squish onto each page. It was a little disappointing, though, because I didn't really find anything super interesting. But to be honest, I didn't you know, have time to go through every single page. Um, but it appeared that Ballarat was definitely a very well-established town by this point in time. I mean, the newspaper was full of advertisements for high-quality clothing, homewares, entertainment, tea, coffee, alcohol, and even steam trains. <laughs> I mean, you know, obviously 
even just between its founding year of 1838 to 1859, when this newspaper was published, so what's that, 21 years, this place had grown exponentially. So they had an established newspaper by then, and even more impressive, they obviously had to have had a huge printing press too, huh? Yeah, like, to be honest, I don't know, Jojo, I'm thinking that this historical timeline is a bit skew if it's, mm. it's not adding up. But I also just realised that when I was showing you the images of the Yarrawee and the Nar Creek tunnels, I forgot to mention the strange markings in the stones. Check these out. Okay, Casey, what are we looking at here? Okay, so I honestly didn't know at the time. Um, but when I put some of the photos on my Instagram story, some people were saying that they look like runes. But overwhelmingly, the response was that they are Masonic symbols. Oh, wow. So, yeah, pretty interesting, huh? And, and these were everywhere, all over the Bluestone, way down under Ballarat, supposedly from 1860, if we're going by the official narrative. Hmm, something smells a bit fishy about Ballarat, doesn't it? I mean, so many oddities and anomalies, right? Yeah, exactly, Jojo. And this episode is only just scratching the surface. Zach and Christine were a wealth of information and they told me so much more that would probably take up at least another few episodes. Seriously, the place is pretty sus. The train station and the post office building alone probably need an episode each. Mm. But speaking of Zach, can I just say that this man is amazing? He has created such a beautiful community of like-minded people that gather at his cafe in Buninyong, which is not far from Ballarat, every week. People gather, they connect, they listen to some great tunes, they drink Zach's delicious brews, and it appears that each week it is growing and growing as more and more people realise that they are not alone in this absolute craziness that we find ourselves in especially down here in Victoria with its divided economy. I mean, there are teachers who meet there each week who have lost their jobs due to the mandates. There are Bible study groups who can no longer attend their churches due to the mandates. I mean, he's really created a safe space, but not without drama, Jojo. Mm -hmm. So he had to deal with a lot, including huge fines and court cases. Oh my God. Yeah, due to his refusal to give in to the tyranny that Victoria faced during those initial lockdowns. But he came out on top and he hasn't stopped smiling and helping people along the way. It was such a beautiful vibe there, Jojo. You should definitely visit one day because mm -hmm. I even met a few Tartarian Truther fans there too. <laughs> This is Annette who came up to say hello. I mean, everyone was just so lovely. Oh, wow. Casey, I am seriously so blown away. And Zach sounds incredible. I would really love to meet him one day. Actually, all the people in that town one day. What a legend, though. He, he just seems to be so welcoming and compassionate and caring, not only to his community, but even to the visitors. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so... It sounds like you guys had a fantastic time in Ballarat and it's such a beautiful town of mystery and, you know, we definitely need to follow up down the track, don't we? Yeah, definitely, Jojo. And hopefully we can go back there together one day <gasps> yes. and you can experience the beautiful Ballarat hospitality for yourself too. Oh, I would love that. <laughs> All right. So I just before we end, I just want to say a huge thank you again to Zach and Christine and Greg and Amber, Tristan, Sean, Andrea and Aaron, Wendy, Alison, Steve, Annette. Oh, I hope I haven't forgotten anyone. <laughs> um, and thank you, Ballarat. You were all amazing and I had such a great time there and you recovered from your sunburn I did yes. <laughs> thanks to my little essential oil concoctions I have healed my head <laughs> excellent excellent and Casey I also just want to say I'm thinking of all the flood victims on the east coast of uh, Australia Queensland and, and New South Wales mostly have copped so much rain um, yeah. And it's been it's been relentless. And I really just hope that if you are out there and you, you do want to help somehow, 
Um, I will leave some links below for you to um, donate if you can or off. I mean, they just need everything right now, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's heartbreaking, Georgia. I've seen some of these, um, some images and some videos online and it's, it's just absolutely horrific. You know, it's, it's, it's people have lost everything and they're going to have to start from scratch. It's just devastating isn't the it? rain absolutely. has been relentless mm -hmm. it's absolutely devastation I mean mm -hmm. it, it has been absolute devastation across um, parts of Queensland and New South Wales and yeah. you know how is it where you are at the moment is it it's, it's still raining um, mm -hmm. and it hasn't stopped you know for days now I haven't seen the sun I don't know for a week or so mm. but um, you know I might have some unstable internet so if there are some sound issues I do apologize yeah, um, yeah. but yeah, I guess that's a wrap. I want to thank everyone for watching. Um, it's been quite a heavy week for us, yeah, and, but I'm, I'm so grateful you had a wonderful time in Ballarat. And I will see talk to you very soon, Casey, but we'll see everybody else next week. Yeah, that's right. Thanks for watching, everyone. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye, Jojo. Bye. Ooh.